Hello everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've made a video, so I've got about five things to cover in this one, and um, I think they are pretty big news, um, but the five things are the sale of my Audi, the I've bought a new camera, I've bought a new microphone, um, I've had the engine mounts replaced and I've had the header tank replaced on the Porsche. So I think I'll tackle them pretty much in that order, um, if I remember what the order is of what I've just said. So, so I haven't really been using the car but the weather's been really good uh, and what I did was I decided to go ahead and um, book in to have uh, a few things done. Um, but before I get into that, uh, about the Audi. So I put it up, I put it on Auto Trader, and I, I I've never sold a car on Auto Trader before. And one of my friends said to me, in the first two days, you will just get scammers and chances, so you can ignore those. Um, which was pretty. He was right because the first few were apologies for the bumpiness. The roads aren't very good around this bit. But the first few people who contacted me were all by email or voicemail or phone and they all said, that, and they were obviously traders, so they all said, I'll give you this price. So I, I'll be honest, I advertised it for 5200 and they would just call up and say, I'll give you this price, like 4900 And you go, well, yeah, I could take that. But what they, so I did some reading and apparently that's what traders do to stop you selling to, to anybody else. And then they turn up and then they say, oh, well, it's got this scratch, that scratch, and they knock thousands off. Um, so that's just what I've heard, and so I, I did ignore those. Uh, I spoke to them, I said come and see it, and a couple of them said I'm not coming to see it unless you accept the offer, which I thought was a bit... Um, I said, so, you know, I, I told them that was the only way that I was going to accept their offer is they came to see it, and we agreed a price, and they took it away. So they didn't come and see it. And um, But then I was working, and someone just caught me on the hop, he rang and he said, I'm nearby, I can be there in a couple of hours, uh, which isn't that actually nearby, um, can I come and see it? And he asked me a couple, you use the roads are rough, um, he said I'll be there in a couple of hours, can I see it? And I went, great. Um, but I did say to him that I had conference calls for the day and I wouldn't be able to clean it and it's been sat there for weeks, so under a tree. And he went, don't worry about it. He asked me a couple of things about the uh, cam belt and stuff like that. So. Uh, he came round, a uh, perfectly lovely guy, um, we had a, a weird socially distanced test drive and uh, weirdly I liked him off the off, you know, it's, it's weird isn't it, you're just trying to sell, you're, doing, you're trying to do a piece of business, but when someone comes along and you just get a feeling about somebody and I thought, you know what, this guy seems okay, and he was buying it for his 20 year old son and I thought, hang on, so I said to him, Let, you know, oh, God, I wish my dad, when I was 20, had bought me a car like this. You know, it's an Audi A3 Quattro S-Line Black Edition Sportback. And he went, no, 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 he's, he's, um, he's worked for it himself. Um, and so what had happened was his son had been furloughed from his job. And while he was furloughed, decided to go and get a job working nights at um, an Amazon warehouse saved up the money and uh, now had, had the money to buy the car um, and he had a certain amount and, and his mum and dad were going to top up the rest um, and in conversation we had quite a long test drive and in conversation he told me you know he was an ex-copper um, his wife was a nurse and um, and that he was granddad he didn't he didn't look old enough to be a granddad um, and anyway so it got to the to the point where I said, look, you know, I'll, I'll knock the price off for a cam belt because it needs that doing. I think the screen probably needs replacing. I'll knock that money off. And, and he went, look, I'll go and talk to my son. He sat in the car, had a conversation, and he came back and made me an offer. And without having pre, any pre-planned idea of how I was going to negotiate or anything like that, an idea, I had an idea of uh, the kind of money that I would take for it as a bottom price. And his was a little bit less, like tiny bit less and 
just something weird happened to me and I was I was just moved by this guy who was in front of me and you know just a straight up honest guy properly salt of the earth telling me about his wife being a nurse and you know we've got a pandemic going on so she's like front line um, all hands to the pumps like probably risking her life every day their 20 year old son who's got this work ethic of I'm just gonna go and earn my shit um, and I was just really won over by it all and and I said I'm not gonna take your offer and I want you to have it for less than he offered and later on I thought what is wrong with me but then I thought no it was like it felt right I, I kind of felt emotional about it I felt emotional when I said it and um, and he said he was taken aback and you know he sent me a text later in the day and he said you know sometimes you, you start to lose faith in people or the human race and uh, and he said it's days like these that make him think there are good people out there and it was just a lovely thing for him to send um, and I, and I said something about, you know, paying it forward. You know, you, we can't all become cynical and things like that. We can be worn down by it. But anyway, the next day, his son came to collect it. He was with his girlfriend. He was with his mum. And I, I just, you know, it kind of reaffirmed what I was thinking. They were lovely people, a lovely family. And I hope they enjoy years and years and years of motoring in that car. Um... I was 11 miles away from hitting one two, the mileage of one, two, three, four, five, six. I was a bit devastated about that, but fair play. Um, so I hope he's having a fantastic time driving that car around um, and being able to, you know, get a couple of things fixed on it, like um, like the wheels and things like that. Uh, so that was the first thing. The car is gone. Um, and it's a relief because it was literally sat there for since I'd bought the Porsche 15 months ago it's kind of not been used very much um, it was a great car for the six and a half years that we had it uh, really served the purpose and um, still a great car it was in uh, the interior was immaculate outside it had a few chips and bobs and things but nothing serious it still looked quite tidy um, so that's done massive thing out of the way a massive weight off my mind it just felt like it was a um, a big um, like a big undertaking but it wasn't really it happened really quickly I advertised it on Sunday and it was gone by Wednesday um, so that was good and I felt good about what I'd done and um, yeah so it just made me a, it was like a, a, a nice warm fuzzy feeling uh, and I think everybody should have that at some point um, but anyway on to other more mundane things um, then the next thing I did was I bought another camera, which I am using right here. It is a GoPro Hero 8 Black. Now, I did some research um, about the cameras and I wanted it to have great stabilization because of these bumpy roads, um, which this was the best one for, but it's an action camera, so I don't know. It's not like a vlogging camera, so I'm not, I wouldn't say I was a vlogger of any kind. Uh, but I think it does the job. I hope it does the job. Anyway, um, so I got that and I really wanted an external wireless microphone. Um, but to do that, I, ha I had to buy uh, what's called a media mod for the camera. And it's basically, it's a, an external fitting that fits on the camera uh, via its USB-C connector. So it's like an additional case that fits around it and it has additional ports built in and it has a omnidirectional mic built in. But it's got a USB-C connector, a headphone jack, a mic jack, and um, a mini HDMI port. Um, and then you can put in additional like a media mods. Um, so the camera cost was reduced on the GoPro website to 279 pounds from 379 or something like that, so I looked great. Um, the media mod on top of that cost 79.99. I thought, oh, right. Um, so, I, I mean, if anybody wants the links to this, I can post them, I'll, I can put them on Instagram as well. Um, and then someone's thrown McDonald's wrappers out in the countryside, arseholes. Um, but then um, I did a little bit more research and I thought I'm gonna get a wireless mic. And the best one that people said was kind of professional grade, but um, affordable. I say affordable, I thought it was eye-wateringly expensive. 
uh, was the Rode Wireless Go and it cost £165 and you get two of these units uh, one is the this is the transmitter um, and it acts as a microphone uh, but you can plug in an external microphone which I've done um, and I hope I'm not my shirt isn't rubbing against it hang on I think we're gonna accelerate a bit Um, anyway, <laughs> I've forgotten what I was saying. Yes, yeah, so it's a transmitter and a receiver, so the receiver's plugged in, and uh, that costs £165, and it's got really rave reviews. Uh, so I, th I did a bit more research, and I thought, you know, I'd up it a bit more. So another road product, I think it's called the Lavalier. I think it's pronounced like that. It sounds French, but I think it's an Australian company that makes them. Um, which is this, which cost another £69. So what's that? Uh, uh, so probably about £500 we're talking I've spent, um, which is kind of eye-watering for me, especially when it's like a tiny hobby and I don't really have any subscribers. If you're watching this and you want to just hit subscribe, I would really appreciate that. Um, so I... I I thought I would try these things, so this is my first video with them. I don't actually know if it's working or anything yet. Um, I'm getting the warning light for not enough uh, coolant in the car, so I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I, I thought I'd give that a go. I did plenty of research. I saw lots of YouTube videos. People are way more knowledgeable than me demonstrating why they were good. So, you know, people, some people were saying, well, don't, don't use the external one. Uh, and what you can do is you can actually put this tape disc to your chest under your t-shirt and it's brilliant. So if you're walking around, there's a guy doing a demo, I can't remember his name now, I should really, he's a, he's a scouser, uh, does a really good video where he's walking around the park and he's, he's got it taped under his shirt. And it sounds fantastic, no wind noise or anything like that way. Um, and no rubbing of his t-shirt or anything, which was, uh, I thought was brilliant, so I thought I might as well do that. And then... Um, so I'm hoping the video quality is better, the sound quality I'm hoping is way better and I'm probably now shouting and I'll have to edit it and turn it down. Uh, hopefully you heard that acceleration in the car. And, uh, and then two other bits of big news. Um, so I've had the header tank changed and I've had the engine mounts done. Now the engine mounts I think I can notice a bit of a difference. I'm not 100% sure, but the thing is, the old ones that came out, um, the garage that did it for me said basically took the, as soon as he took the weight of the engine off the mounts, they just ditched all their oil, because they're oil-filled mounts. Um, and he, um, I trust the guy, he's independent, uh, I'll let you know who he is on Instagram and I'm gonna do some posts of photos of when the car was there and I'll tag him in that. Uh, but he's called Flat Six Jack and he works out of a place in Reading. And he said these look like the original uh, mounts, like they've done 150,000 miles. And I'm like, whoa. Um, so, and, and they were obviously stretched where the engine had been hanging down a bit and he had to like mangle the bolts to get it all out. Um, so that was done and I'm really glad that's been done. Uh, the header tank's been changed and, but the header tank got changed and obviously he tested it, he brought it up to temperature two or three times and it was fine. I took it for a drive and I got stuck in traffic and it just started pumping out the coolant when it got above the center, the needle just went past the 80, the zero on the 80. Uh, and it just started pumping it out. It pumped out nearly all the uh, coolant out of the cap. Now, I think the cap was a bit loose. Um, so anyway, I had to then nurse it to a Halfords to get more uh, coolant. Topped it up. And this is the first time I've driven it since. And it's still giving me the light. It just came on. Um, so I think I need a new cap, which Jack says he's got for me, so I just need to get over there and pick it up. Uh, I'll need to top up the coolant again. Hopefully it's not leaking at the moment, and it's just that I needed to top it up a bit more. 
so that's what needs doing, but um, I, I'm not sure how much difference it's made because when the temperature started to creep up, I wasn't convinced that I could hear the fans kicking in. I need to check that the fans work and does this mean that the previous header tank didn't really have a leak, it was just the pressure built up and it was basically spewing out of the, the, the cap. So it's the same cap from before, it's not a new cap. Um, so the header tank looks great, uh, the engine mounts look great, uh, it drives a little bit better I think, the reverse is still a bit, bit of a pain to change into. Uh, but otherwise I think it's all good and otherwise it still feels tight I, I know it's all kind of bouncing along but the roads down here are horrific um, so uh, so it's been a big couple of weeks Audi's gone new camera new mic wireless mic um, header tank changed engine mounts changed uh, so and, and then, you know, obviously the Audi being sold is a, is a big deal in, in my mind it's a big deal um, so it's, it's been a busy couple of weeks for that kind of thing but um, I've also been keeping an eye out for if I did decide to sell this car and I'm at the same time same as I've said before I, I know I'd regret it if I sold it I'd regret it because it's I, I wouldn't be able to afford another one because at the, at the rate the prices are going up so if I've had this for 15 months and I bought it for six and a half thousand pounds okay I'll spend a few hundred pounds uh, a few hundred pounds I'm, I'm still under nine thousand as a total and someone's already offered me ten thousand which is kind of unheard of because normally you buy the car and you're kind of anchored to the price that you paid for it and you don't expect to get the money back that you've um, put towards the parts and servicing and, and that kind of thing so from that point of view, I mean, it's, it's unheard of to try and get that money back. But then I was looking at some of the things and I thought, well, you know, would I like a 1960s, early 70s Targa? But they're just massively overpriced. And then I did see, like, you know, loads of people are doing videos on... God, this road's awful. Um, doing loads of videos on having got... That side of the road is actually better, so on the way back it'll be better. Um, but loads of people are doing videos on... Um, Aston Martin Vantages that they bought, like the, the very first one that came out, 2006, 2007, um, and you know everyone's saying they bought it for 25 grand, 30 grand, and they're just so cheap, and that's an astronomical amount of money for me. But now that I've sold the Audi, and I'll, if I did sell this, I'd have kind of half the money, so 15,000 pounds. But then. I've seen them now for £20,000. Not seen them, but I would, I would hope that I can haggle it down to twenty. And that makes me think, can it go any lower? I mean, they still look fantastic and they just don't look that old. Um, so, I don't know. I need to have a think. Um, I, I just, uh, my problem is I don't have any time for anything. So I actually did something myself yesterday and I polished one of the headlights using the turtle wax thing that I bought ages ago. And it's made a difference, but it only took 10 minutes doing it and you really need to take about uh, an hour per light or a pair of lights an hour. And if I had a drill attachment to kind of do the sanding bit, it would be so much better. But I didn't, I did it. I did it hand, so sort of sanded it. Uh, but it's made a significant difference. I'll post some pics on uh, Instagram of what it looked like before and after. And um, but it really seemed to make a difference. So, um, but on, on that kind of project, I can't. Also, would I just look like some kind of asshole driving Aston Martin Vantage? Because it doesn't look like. I think I can still get away that this car does look like a budget Porsche. If anybody knows about Porsches, they go oh, 996, so they know it's a. The lower end of the market but for anyone when I when it's clean which is pretty clean at the moment on the outside people who don't really know about Porsches oh, try and stack who don't really know about Porsches seem to think oh he's driving a Porsche which kind of associates you with being a, an asshole 
or van drivers want to race you. An interesting thing happened uh, the other week when I was out. I might have talked about this in the video before. A van driver was like backing me up because he didn't want me to overtake him, but he didn't want me to drive fast or at the speed limit even. But there was also a van driver behind me who was gagging to overtake me. And it just made me think, van drivers hate me simply because I drive a Porsche. There's kind of no need for that, right? Um, anyway, so that that's my thinking at the moment. I'm still wedded to, I want to keep this car because I get so much enjoyment out of it. Um, but I would like to drive a water, uh, air-cooled Porsche. Hang on. Uh, I had to back off there because the police car coming the other way, even though I'm not speeding. Um, so I'm also the flashing light is really scaring me. Um, you know, on the far end, on the hot side of the temperature gauge, it starts flashing, saying there's not enough coolant. Um, but I've really enjoyed driving this car. I still enjoy driving it. I was about to drop a gear. I dropped a third gear at 65 miles an hour. That would have been a mistake. No, it wouldn't. Let's do it. sound on the video is much better. I hope the quality of the uh, picture is better as well. Uh, and you know what? It doesn't matter if you came here to listen to me rambling about possibly buying a, uh, another Porsche, selling my Audi, talking about microphones, talking about cameras. I think I do would like people to subscribe and tell me about their experiences and what I'll do is I thought about putting the camera on the outside of the car because I've got a wireless microphone and I was too scared because I didn't want to lose my 500 pound investment in case it fell off and broke or I lost it um, I didn't want to do that so yeah so it's gonna be the same format um, I've got my other camera now that I could put on the outside, but then obviously you wouldn't get the audio. Uh, but that's kind of fine. Um, I need to get home now, so let the car cool down and then top up the coolant and park it somewhere where it's flat. But I'll, first I'll check to see if it is pumping out um, coolant out of the cap. I really hope it's not, Just the fact that home. there wasn't very much in there. So when I get back to Jack, um, also flat six Jack. So I'll tag him in some pictures on uh, Instagram, uh, which means that if you need to contact him, you're in and about the area and you want something done, uh, you'll be able to contact him via Instagram. And the thing is, it's great because he, he, he kept me in check because I said to him, well, I've read online that, you know, oh yeah, that was, I'm forgetting to tell you something. Um, I initially went to him because um, a coil pack gave up. So, and I said to him, look, I've seen uh, online people saying, oh, I've changed out all the coil packs and it's made a massive difference to the car. And I said, should I change them? And the great thing is, unlike going to uh, the Porsche dealership, he said it could make a difference and most of your cold packs are kind of cracked, but he said, don't forget why you're doing this. You're trying to keep the cost right down and you're running the Porsche day to day on a budget. And that is what I'm trying to do. And I don't have the money to keep getting things like that done. So as long as I have him also helping me keep it real and helping me be able to afford the stuff that I'm doing because let's face it, he's way more reasonably priced than uh, a dealership. I'm not saying he's like dirt cheap, you can go there and pay 20 quid for something because he's still uh, a Porsche qualified, experienced um, mechanic engineer. And he can 
did I need to go down there? No, I didn't. Uh, he could turn his hand to any job that you have on a Porsche. He's always working on old air cooled Porsches. He's always working on new 991s, 992s. I haven't seen a 903 there, but you'll you'll be able to see on his uh, um, Instagram the kind of cars he's getting in. Um, so yeah, um, he said, you know, don't forget why you're doing it. And so I'm glad he said that. Otherwise, I would have spent money that I didn't need to. Um, and I don't know if it would have increased my enjoyment of driving the car because I still enjoy it. Um, but because I don't go anywhere, and if I go anywhere, I'm normally with the family. So. I make uh, a special point of driving the car like I am now. So I will continue to do stuff <coughs> with, um, now that I've got the camera, the wireless mic, um, and hopefully that hasn't been rubbing against my shirt and the sound quality is really good. And also I've seen uh, people doing stuff where they've got the microphone plugged in and they've got somebody sat next to them in a restaurant or in a loud environment and you can still hear both people. And you can do it in a way that if you use the transmitter as a mic on its own, you can stick it on something and there's a little wind deflector thing that goes on top to stop wind noise, but you can use it as a handheld mic as well. So what I might do is ask Jack if he wants to be in the video. Um, and also if, um, if he wants to go for a drive, I put him in the car, talk to him about all things Porsche, and this is a bumpy road, but we're going to go for it. Trying to get over these bumps here, and then... Oh, this car's coming the other way. Oh, there's a slight rattling that started. It sound, doesn't sound like suspension, it sounds like... I haven't left a spanner somewhere, have I? Um, so, yeah. So all of these things I'm, I'm really pleased about. And I feel like we're, you know, we're moving forward. So um, I'm gonna go for it, get more subscribers, get more people onto driving budget Porsches. And not only that, maybe I need, some, I need to put, start doing some stuff where I'm looking for a budget Porsche. And I find them, I post them, talk to people about them, message people about them, and anyone who's looking for one, you know, look on forums, look on international websites. Uh, although, why would you want a left-hand one? Because of the, the the old 911s that I've been looking at, so I'd love to a Targa. But if I could um, look at, um, and then those that always left-hand drive. And the thing about left-hand drive is if you're driving a country lane and you get caught behind a Honda Jazz, which is always likely to happen, um, you can't overtake. Actually, I felt like you can't overtake safely because you can't see past them because you're on the wrong side of the car. Hmm. The roads are so bumpy, they're ruining my enjoyment of the car. Uh, but anyway, I think that's about it. Um, I've rambled on for absolutely ages, but. Um, I had more stuff uh, for this video and the next one I'm gonna have to find a car and test drive it I'm, t I'm still too scared to put the camera on the outside so if I stuck out the bonnet uh, I'm not sure that what that would add I'm not sure it would add anything but if I wanted just a video of the outside I could put my old camera my old camera was a GoPro Hero 7 silver so it, it had no external ports um, and with the, with this one, you can take out the battery. You get a spare battery. Uh, no, you don't get a spare battery with it. But you can buy spare batteries with it. Um, so it's a lot more flexible. Um, and also, it's got the built-in mic on the media uh, on the mic that's on the camera and on the media mod. The media mod has a much better camera, but well, much better camera, much better microphone. But because I've gone taken a leap and, and bought this external one um, I won't, unlikely I'll be using that so also there's a slight creaking I don't know what that's from 
Auntie, as I say, I'll have to get Jack in the car and uh, see what he makes of it because he's been in it obviously he hasn't driven it any distance um, but yeah but anyway subscribe um, and uh, let's see where the next video takes us